What's up you guys? Thor is here with the FOCO Flow Show. I wanted to do a little bit of a long-term review and install video for the Thule, or Tool, I never know how to say that, Pro XT um, two bike rack. This is a bit of a long-term review. I've had this bike rack for almost two years, but I just bought the four bike extender. So I've loved this bike rack so far. I wanted to talk with you guys about some of the features and benefits of it that really set it apart. And then of course, work through how hard or easy it's going to be to put a four bike rack extender on it. So here we go, we'll hop right into it. The things I liked about it, we'll put it together and show you its features. is the pressure plate that they use to uh, put the bike into the two inch or one and a quarter inch receiver. If you look down here, you have this pressure plate that expands as you um, put it into the two inch receiver hitch there, or like I said, there's one and a quarter option, and it's got a locking mechanism under here, if you can see it right there, it spins, but if you lock it, it'll lock in place. So it's a little bit heavy, but there's some good grip plates, and I'll show you here how we put it on. So basically all you do, take your two inch receiver hitch input here, lift it up, pull out there, slide it in. So as you slide it in, you look, and you can see where the hole is for the hitch, and you just push it forward, I use my shoulder, And then it drops in right there. And you just take your key, lock it, and it spins. There we go. And then you lock it and you spin it as much as you need to to get it tight. Once it's here, take most of the play out of it. There we go. It's pretty firm, no play. And then you put the key in, unlock it, and now it spins, and then they can't get your bike rack off without the key. So once you get that done, you have the bike rack set up. Fits pretty close profile here when you're not using it. And then the best part about this entire thing is the lever. This lever here, up and down, allows you to disengage. Pull it down. From here, you've got the two bike trays. You've got this little inner tray for regular mountain bike tires. These are designed to fit all the way up to five inch fat bike tires and then ratchet straps that slide down and back to fit the different size bikes. With bikes on it, you can lower it down to get it out of the way to open the straps. I'll show you that in a second. Next best thing is you open up here, all the way around, and slide this out with the lever. You've got the ability to install whichever bike you sit. So I've got a 4.8 inch tire fat bike that we're going to install onto this thing, and I'll show you some of the things that we learned of the pros and the cons. All right, so here she is, 4.8 inch tires on the fat bike. I'm going to throw her on the Pro XT. So it's advertised for fitting bikes. You lift it up, sit it in the saddle tray, and then you sit it back in the jockey space back there. First things to do, lift it all the way up, pull it all the way up. A little bit of friction, but no big deal. And then it just ratchets straight down and back. So this is the first step. But <coughs> the thing that you need to look about is over here. See, so the problem is here, It'll sit down, but there's just no way to get this to ratchet in and attach. I think maybe Tool, Thule, um makes different straps. I have not gotten around to looking on the website to do so. I just use, and I've taken this fat bike all over the countryside. I just wrap a bungee cord twice. So this is a little bit ghetto for the bike rack, but get it here and you latch it in 
here, you'll see a little bit of wobble, but that's to be expected on all of them. So we back up here, a little bit of wobble. So, so you can push it down, a little bit of wobble, but that's not going anywhere, and that's what we want. So then we can take and put our next spike right on it with this ratchet system here, same deal, and I'll show you two, this is a size extra large fat bike, about as big as bikes get, and I'll show you, I got a medium bike, but I've had both bikes on. So this is just a regular adult size medium mountain bike. I've had bigger bikes on here. You just lift it up and then set it down here. When you lift this one up, you want to get it in there. And sometimes the only thing you have to watch out for is if the handlebars are here. And then you might have to raise or lower this seat post or you can just loosen the um, uh, stem bolts to rotate it so that you can get this on. In this instance, it looks like we've got some interference there, and we'll have to loosen those bolts to turn them there so that they don't have interference. No big deal there. Push it through here. Push that down. Lock it there. And then if you look here, this is the other adjustment that you need to make. So lift it up. Come here a little closer. And then this slides forward so that it's right in the saddle here. What do you and then you can just, these how it works with all normal, regular mountain bike uh, tires. If you just push the ratchet system in, and you start ratcheting it through. And then it gets in there nice and tight. And so you've got two bikes on here, fat bike and a regular mountain bike. Everything fits there. And then the other really cool thing about the bike rack is here, you have the ability to pull out an entire security system that wraps around here and then it bolts back up into that system there with another key. So it's another anti-theft opportunity. And so from here, the entire thing is secure enough with that same lever, the same lever, let, let it down. These bikes aren't going anywhere. You need to get something out of the back. Over here, and the bike swing completely out of the way. So pretty good stuff here. The only thing that's been weird about it was not really fitting fat bike tires. It's a little bit heavy, but it's been durable as heck, and we haven't had any issues with it. So we'll switch now to closing this, latching it back, and then we'll look at the install for the four bike extender. It's here, lift, satisfying snap, and then we're back ready to go. So I picked up the two bike extender rack on Memorial Day weekend from REI where they do their 20% off the Thule rack sale. The kids are getting bigger and we got more stuff to carry on our trips so I decided it was time to take the plunge and spend the $375 on sale to get the rack. Comes neatly packaged and everything is pretty easy to disassemble. The instructions are not particularly well written, in fact they're just pictures so I'll call out a few things here on what to look out for when doing this install. The first step is pretty straightforward. There's two bolts here on the ratchet handle that you have to loosen and then a set screw right in the middle between the two that you have to disengage with a smaller hex screw. And then the handle, as you see here, will just pop off and you can move on to the next step. So I want to point out here that that's the set screw that you use to loosen out the engagement of the whole locking mechanism. It's not particularly clear in the instructions, maybe it should be obvious, but you want to push that screw flush so that you cannot see it anymore before you move to put the extender rack into this tube here. This is extremely important because it is the entire mechanism that makes the locking handle engage and disengage. Once you do that, you're able to take the main frame and push it down into the tube, making sure that you don't bump that set screw back in. I wrestled with this for a little while before pro tip, you probably want to use some kind of lubricant. I used WD-40 eventually and let it slide right in. Directions don't say that. That's probably obvious to most of you out there. I'm not particularly handy. So I wrestled with this thing before I used uh, the WD-40 and then it slid right down and popped into place. 
So circling back on to the set screw conversation, once that uh, extender rack is put into place, there's two main bolts that hold it there, but then you have to push that set screw back in to engage the locking mechanism. This first go around, it was not uh, flush, and so when I pushed it in, it would not engage, and I spun that thing a million times before I had to completely disassemble everything and then put it back together with that bolt pushed out. You'll have to take my word for it that I eventually got it figured out. And then you just put the two bolts here um, into uh, the frame itself. And then on the top side of the frame, a little bit lower down, there's two more bolts to hold the whole rack together. Nice and snug, firm it up, and you won't have any issue. The next step is to put the handle back on, but here's our friend the set screw one more time. Push it out so you cannot see that bolt so that when you push the handle back on, you've got two outside bolts to bolt in, but there's that middle screw that if you don't do the set screw right, it will not engage. I did eventually get it figured out, was able to push that sucker in, tighten it down, so that once we get everything together, those two set screws, pull the ratchet handle up here, and then you slowly lift the rack down and you'll hear that satisfying snap with all four uh, racks in place. And now we just have to actually install the tray so they'll hold some bikes. Mercifully, the next couple of steps are pretty straightforward. You put the trays on, and you get them uh, bolted in. There's an opportunity to slide the trays left to right a little bit underneath here where you see me working. I don't fiddle it with too much. It's pretty straightforward just to bolt in pretty even there. So the trays are about the same width left to right. And then you drop the actual saddle trays in there uh, with the same steps getting underneath and then uh, screwing in some bolts so that everything is snug. Once all your saddle trays are screwed in, you put on the uh, back wheel um, jockey. There's another screw to hold the um, end cap on. And from there, you get to put in the key locking mechanism into the two new uh, ratchet arms that you have for security purposes. And then your installation is complete and ready for bikes. So without bikes, you see it up there uh, fully upright. It's tall, almost higher than the uh, SUV, but that's uh, gonna come with the territory if you want that many bikes on one rack. But with four bikes on there, I put the two kids' bikes on this uh, rack with my uh, two bikes, but it would be very easy to put four adult bikes on here. And as you can see, even with four bikes on, you disengage the entire locking mechanism, tilt all four bikes back, they hold snug. It's a bit heavy to lift it up, but you got four bikes on there, snap it back in place, and then you are off and ready to go on your first adventure with four bikes. So we'll see it from the side here to give you an idea with the full mountain bike uh, posse ready to roll. And then we geared up for a trip to grandma's house, and I'm happy to report two hours later, the bikes were still there. And we had the opportunity to get out on the farm and pedal around together as a family. So in summation, it's an awesome rack. The four bike extender had a little bit of fiddliness that you needed to install, but overall, uh, for as expensive as it is, I don't know that there's a better rack out there to easily accommodate all the way up to five inch fat bike tires. I think that's the key for the Thule rack compared to some other great racks out there like the one up and uh, Kuat racks. Overall, this is a great opportunity to get all four of your friend, friends out there or your family and go on an adventure together so you can find that flow.